Good evening. And uh, as part of the No Near Never Summer Specials, we've got a special treat for you, uh, an FPL special, in fact. Um, even more specials with a special guest, uh, last year's champion. Um, so the last two years' champions are on, on here chatting FPL. What more could you want? Luke Lambert here to preview the 2023-24 Premier League season, which will include Burnley once again. How nice is that feeling, Luke? It's a great feeling to have Burnley in the FPL for next season. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. It adds another dimension for everyone, particularly being Burnley fans. And yeah, looking forward to chatting about uh, chatting about it with this year's this year's winner in, in yourself, Adam. So I must start by saying congratulations um, on, on your win last season. Um, and we can't have it again, everyone. So let's uh, let, let's try and... Uh, Try and knock him off his off his perch for for next season. Yeah, just don't listen to my advice. Obviously, I've just been throwing bad advice at everyone and uh, doing the complete opposite myself. Uh, but I think there's only um, only one place to start really. Um, Erling Haaland, after his uh, magnificent season last year, has come in at um, a very stonking fourteen million um, pounds. What do you make of that, Luke? It's a lot of money, but I think it's money well worth spending, to be honest. Um, he was so good last season, and you've got to remember that that was his first season um, under Pep. And often, players, when they're playing under Pep Guardiola, take a little bit of time to hit the strides and to understand his methods. Um, so I only think he'll get better. And if he gets better under under Pep next season it's going to be a frightening prospect for everyone and I think it's uh, not I wouldn't say good value but but money worth worth spending so I'd um, I think it's fair enough to have it at 14 million Yeah I think um, really good point that I'd normally and I think I did the game week one last year avoided Haaland uh, I'd normally avoid new transfers into the league and just give them a few weeks and see how see how they bet in because you can quite easily have, um, well, a Morientes from years ago, or, uh, yeah. or well, I suppose Nunes started well last year. But you just you don't know what you're going to get. But yeah, like you said, he hit the ground running and uh, yeah, made City almost unstoppable. Um, so the first category we're going to going to cover is three players after the price reveals that are nailed in your game week one squad as much as they can be. At this, yeah, point. sure. Uh, do you want me to go ahead with my with my three other? Yeah, you uh, you crack on. We we are three that um, yeah that you will definitely have in your squad for uh, for the upcoming. Well, yeah. Game. Okay. So, so, game week one. So Harland is is the first one who we've, we've talked a little bit about for the reasons um, that we've we've both spoken about. So he, he's the first. Um, Saka is the second one. Um, I think for a midfielder who had such a good season last season, eight point five million is is excellent value for for, for him. Um, and again, I think he's the sort of player that that will only improve under Arteta. So I think he's good value at eight and a half million. So he's in my in my squad, and he will be in my squad for for the first game week. And the third one is Trent Alexander Arnold who I, again, he's been a very, very consistent performer in FPL over, over the last few seasons. And I was slightly wondering whether he'd be priced as a midfielder um, for next season because he has started to play in midfield a little bit. But thankfully, from an FPL point of view, he's, 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 a, he's down as a defender and so you'll get the attacking um, contributions from him as well as hopefully the odd clean sheet as well. So they're my three locked in players for game week one. Yeah, um, I was talking to you before, and they'd be the exact three that I would pick. Um, I think we we probably do play the game quite similarly, but yeah, they are standouts for me as well. Um, I think they had, they had the hands tied a bit with Trent maybe because he had played in defence for the majority of last season. So then moving to a midfield yeah. off the back of a couple of games might have been a bit harsh, but I think, yeah, this year with the new um, new formation that uh, that Klopp looks looks like he'll be trying the three two four one, 
Um, it, anything could happen and you can't risk missing out. Well, in my opinion, you can't risk missing um, what Trent has to offer um, this season. Um, so on to the next one. Three avoids after the price reveal. So don't have to be people that you automatically think of, but just three people who you've looked at and thought, no chance. Yeah, I think that this is a, a difficult category to discuss. and I'm, I'm loath to give people advice on saying avoid him at all costs because the amount of times where you've started the FBL season thinking I'm never going to have him in my squad or my team, um, and then after a few weeks you're reconsidering. But the, 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 what, what I would advise people on, on the avoids... I would actually say, Man City, for now, Man, Manchester City midfielders, because you never know what Pep is going to do at the at the start. So, for me personally, Grealish, Foden, Mares, Silva, if he's if he's still there, that, that those 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 midfielders, I'd avoid those at the start because you don't know what Pep's going to do with his with his starting lineups, and it'll take a, a couple of weeks to to get that sort of into your head and into into your mind as to what he's going to play. So I would avoid those. The, the other one is McAllister, um, who, who's gone to Liverpool. Last season at Brighton, he played in a pretty attacking role for most of the season and he got a lot of attacking returns. He was on penalties. Um, this season, again, I'm not 100% sure, but I would guess he would adopt a more defensive um, position um, with with Liverpool's attacking midfielders that they've already got in their squad. I would guess he would sit a bit deeper, and I would also suspect him not to be on penalties, not to be first choice on on, on penalties. So, again, for the time being, I, I'd avoid him. It might change, obviously, if he goes into a, a more attacking position later on, um, or or Klopp does decide him to play him further forward. But I would avoid him, and then finally. Again, it's a bit of a wait and see situation. Wilson and Isak, the two Newcastle forwards. Um, Newcastle have got tough fixtures, I think, to, to start with. And again, um, I, I'm not sure who how would pick to start um, out of those two. So I would avoid them both t- to begin with. Um, you're slightly taking a bit of a gamble, unless obviously one of them gets injured or in pre season. One of them is, you know, hit the ground running and is scoring a lot of goals, and you think, yeah, he's going to go with him. So they would be my avoids um, to begin with. But like I say, that that can that can easily change. What about yourself, Adam? Who who have you gone for? Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna save two of them until a conversation later on because I think it'll make it quite interesting after I've uh, okay. seen uh, seen the draft that you've put in. Spoiler I... in a dra- um, Luke's first draft at the end. But yeah, I completely agree. I've I've gone for a different Newcastle player, so I've um, I've said for the start to um, to avoid Kieran Trippier, who was the top point scoring defender last season by some distance. Uh, he's had a price hike to six and a half million, and like you've already mentioned, really tough set of fixtures. Uh, well, tough set of fixtures at the beginning. They'll have Champions League football, um, potentially a bigger squad. Not that I'm saying that Trippier won't play. And the back, the second half of last season, I didn't think he were as influential going forward as he could have been. Probably unlucky with some, um, like not getting points with some of the strong data that he had. But I'll be, I'll be not going for Trippier from the start. One to keep an eye on. But when you've got Botman at two million cheaper, Shah at one point five million cheaper, um, it's I think it's going to be difficult to squeeze uh, Trippier in for for a while. But I love the guy, so he might he might still make an appearance at um at some point. But yeah, my other two, yeah, I'll just I'll just cling on to for now. Um Hi. might be um might be a similar similar topic as as what we covered before, but um and sorry if there's any repetition, but who do you think are the three bargains um from from the price list after looking through yeah. Them. The, the, th- the three that I think are really, really good value. Um, Estupinian from, from, from Brighton, the, the, the attacking fullback. He was excellent last season, um, it, you know, particularly towards the end when Brighton won that great run of form. He, he was a key part in their attacking play, picked up a few clean sheets as well. Um, so for me, he, he's he's a, a really, really cheap bargain. I think what's he coming in at? Is it, is it five million he, he comes in at? Yes, yeah, which yeah. Is, is, pretty, is pretty good. Um, and Buemo for for Brentford again. 
he was a, a good player last season um, and I was in, impressed with him. And I also think um, that given that he, Ivan Tony is out, he might take up a more central position and maybe play even further forward than he did. And he's listed as a midfielder. Um, so I think that's good good value in, 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 in him. And my other one is Matoma, the Brighton, Brighton midfielder, who, again, um, I think re- reasonable, reasonable price and, and someone who, um, yeah, I think is is good value. And, and Brighton have also um, got some decent fixtures early up, so uh, I think that getting some Brighton players in there is is important. And I'm quite surprised that those two in particular haven't been hyped up more than the more than given them how they performed at the end of last season. Yeah, I think um, I completely agree with the Brighton uh, aspect of it. But as a Matoma owner um, in the second half of last season, he kind of flattered to deceive quite a bit with, yeah, he looked great, but rarely delivered on the points. And then they'd end up with a penalty and McAllister had had punished here and there. But um, yeah, no, I I think I can see why people go there, but I think it were one attacking return in his last 10 games at the end of last season. So this that was one that I were that I'd put in my avoids. So right. I knew, knew you'd you'd have him. Yeah, yeah. yeah you were hyping him up. Um but that was just because I've been burnt before and I play this game. Yeah, I, I, so. I, I had him for, for a long period of last season and he didn't return. I, I actually thought it, there was a period at the end of last season when McAllister, Matoma, March, and it was two from three. And I did think it was one of those situations where there was a little bit of luck involved. I can remember a couple of in- instances where there was one game where March didn't didn't get an attacking return when he faced yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah, yeah. He time. scored. Um, there were a couple of penalty shouts that I thought, you know, Matoma won a couple of penalties that weren't that weren't given. Um and yeah, there was one. There was one moment where I think McAllister scored in the last minute, won a, won a penalty in the last minute, and I fortunately had had him. Um, but so, so I think, uh, yeah. But I was just impressed with him as a as a player, and um, yeah, possibly may, maybe I'll rethink my uh, starting my starting eleven, Adam. Uh, after now, now you've said that, yeah, but, uh, think- given that you are the current. Current uh, current title holder, maybe I'll rethink. But yeah, no, I'll uh, something to something to think about over the next few weeks. Yeah, my luck might have run out, but um, no, Brighton are a quality side, and like you said, really good fixture at the start. He's a very good player, really easy on the eye. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a fair shout. It's a game of opinions, and, uh, and that's why yeah. we're discussing it. Um, my three are for bargains. Saka, I think you've already mentioned, really underpriced. I think he could have easily been nine and a half, ten million. He's get he's going to get better every year, uh, like you yeah. already said. Now he's coming into his prime. Arsenal uh, look like they're strengthening in the right areas, and he sh- could and should be a talisman for them. Uh, another one, another talisman uh, for Bruno Fernandez um, is also coming at eight and a half uh, million, which I think's a steal. Um, given he was twelve million at one point, and one of the most sought after assets in the game two or three years ago. Uh, everything goes through him. If he's playing further forward, um, then I think he's he could be, yeah, he could be massive value for money. The only dilemma there is Rashford's nine million, so he's only 0.5 million more expensive, and you you know what you're getting with Rashford after last year, just pure firepower, and they've not signed a strike yet either. So interesting dilemma. Probably sat on the fence with that, but Fernandez looks looks tremendous value for me. And then last one, maybe well, very rogue, I'd say, um, for the bargains. It's definitely a potential bargain. Uh, Dominic Calvert Lewin um is coming at six million, uh, which again, he could be injured. He's been injured basically for the last two seasons. So it's probably I'm only gonna make that decision if he's had a strong preseason. Um, yeah. yeah, he's he's one to watch for me as well. I I actually looked at Calvert Lewin. I thought I think that is that is good value, and he's had previous seasons where you know he's he's got in the England squad, and he's he's been a uh, you know he's 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 a good goal scorer, and if he gets the run of form, he, he's he's yeah, I think that's good value for him. Yeah, I agree with that one. 
Right, next one. We've talked about a lot of um, exciting assets and um, and all these great attacking players. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the best budget enablers. So um, who are you going to be filling your squad with um, on basically bench warmers who, who may come on every now and again or play when they've got a good fixture to enable you to have as many of them star players as you can? Any of those caught your eye? Yeah, so Amari Bell at Luton. Um, Luton defender coming in at four million, cheapest cheapest price you, you can get. I actually think Luton might be quite tough to to beat at home, and they'll set up tight. They'll set up um, packing out like they did in the in the playoff, like they did in the playoff final. They'll, they'll try and keep as many clean sheets as they can. And I think um, speaking to a few um, Luton fans, I think he will start in their in their defensive line. Um, so I think he is is a good one if they've got an easy home fixture to to, to bring in. Um, the other one who I think is is a good budget enabler is a little bit more expensive, but J- James Tarkovsky from from Everton. I think he's coming in at four point four point five, um, and we know how Sean Dyche likes to set up with with his sides and Everton stayed up because they got three or four one nil wins at home at the end of last season. And um, and he was a big part of that, and I think he'll play. And it wouldn't surprise me if Everton um, have a lot of clean sheets at home at Goodison Park this season, so he will be someone you can bring in. And then finally, um, I'm sure all our listeners will be pleased to hear this one, Jordan Bayer coming in at £4 million, um, who again, um, I think is, is good value. And we're going to talk, I think, a little bit, f- a bit further on about the value of the Burnley, Burnley players. Um, but I think he is possibly underpriced maybe by half half a million I think the um, organisers of, of FPL didn't see his marauding runs um, during last season and, and he might pop up with the odd goal as well actually from, from corners so they're my three budget enablers Yeah I think with Bayer that um, that was a standout for me looking at the Burnley Burnley prices I couldn't believe like it's, if I had to I'd say he's pretty nailed on to be a starting defender for us and if that's the case, they're normally minimum four and a half. And yeah, like you said, they can't have seen him play that often. But we'll take advantage of that. Yeah. Uh, a couple of, I've um I've just thrown a couple of names out there to to watch if if they start playing. Um so Ariola is a four million pound goalkeeper for West Ham. Um, yeah. there's been talk of him taking over from um from Fabianski for a year or two now, and it's not happened, but if it does, then it, he's a really good option. Uh, and Dombele is back at Spurs after a couple of years out on loan. New manager there, which then we'll talk about later. But he's for a four and a half million midfielder. In there's not very many four and a half million midfielders this year that that take your fancy like there has been in the past with um, Leon Bailey and and Andreas Pereira standouts last year. And then my last one is um, Balogun from Arsenal. Obviously not if he stays yeah. at Arsenal. But if he moves to another Premier League club, you've got a four and a half million forward who scored twenty goals in French um, French league and last year. Uh, so that'd be that'd represent tremendous value. Um, yeah, I think there we. That's enough of the cheap stuff. Um, which because I don't know if you're anything like me, but fixtures play a massive part in in what um, what I look at into for my FPL planning. Who do we are teams to target from game week one? Yeah, I think it's it's an interesting one. That the first two, I mean, Man City, the first two two obvious ones, if if you like, a Man City and Arsenal of the big boys. You'd say they've got. I think they've probably got the best the best fixtures. Uh, I think it's like I said earlier, it's it's tricky with Man City because picking likely starters in their in in their side is is difficult. Haaland is one. Edison, the keeper, is one, and then other than that, it's not a lottery. But you are struggling to to, to find guys who are definitely going to play. Brighton, we've talked about. I think they've got good, a, a pretty good run, a good good start, good good run of fixtures to to target. And the other one is Everton. I think they have got some good home fixtures, early doors, um, and they've got some players who are good value for money. So you can bring them in and. Um, you know, as, as as cheaper players to maybe build up your squad and also to to start in those in those key games. So they're the three sides that, uh, sorry, the four sides that I would look to look to specifically target um, early doors. 
Yeah, and we'll um we'll share out the um the fixture ticker as well um when we tweet when we tweet this podcast out so you've got an idea of uh, who has the easier starts and who's got a tough tough starts the season. Um, in terms of how are you going to build your squad, then there's plenty of ways to do it. Are you going to try and cram a load of the big hitters in the Harlands, the Canes, the Salas, the Trents, and then build around that, or are you going to be more reserved and spread the cash and um, and have just Harland and then a lot of the mid to high price midfielders packing your squad, or are you just looking at it completely flexible? And you haven't got, you haven't decided on your plan yet. Yeah, I think the, the guy. I guess if you like the sort of the, the higher valued players at, at the minute, I've obviously got Harland, who we talked about, Trent, who's an expensive defender, and I think the midfield area is, is, is quite a difficult one because there seem to be a lot of good value midfielders in and around the eight nine million mark who you've spoken about, Rashford. Um, Odegaard, Saka, Fernandez, they're all around that mid mid price. But you can really if you if you have Salah, which who at the minute I, I have actually picked, you can only probably afford to have one of those what one other of those of those guys. So at the minute I've got Salah and Saka as, as one expensive and then one slightly less one and, and then three cheap cheaper midfielders. But that might be I might change that. I might with withdraw Salah from my squad um and and play maybe two two of two of the slightly cheap ones. But I, I think I've been burned in the past not having Salah in my in my team is such a consistent performer and um it's sort of a conundrum really. It's 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 a difficult one and, and I'd say I'm undecided on that at the minute. The other um the other area that I think is quite an interesting one is the is the goalkeeper. Because, like I said, Edison is is somebody who plays week in, week out for Man City. He's there every every week, and he should have got more clean sheets than he did last season. And I actually think Pep, one of the things he will be looking to improve on, is keeping clean sheets for Man City. I thought they conceded a lot of sloppy goals in the last ten minutes of games um, that burned a lot of FPL managers actually. Um, and so, if you pick him, he's, an, he's a million more than, than a lot of other keepers who are who are good and first choice keepers. But you are, you know he's going to play every week, so that that's another area of discussion. So yeah, it's it's up for it's up for debate, up for discussion. Um, but these are the decisions that I guess you're making throughout the season and and that, that, are, that are changing. So I don't know what about yourself, Adam? What, what do you reckon? Uh, as we'll see with the draft so at the moment I'm just on um, just on Haaland and Trent and I've I've chosen like you said to spread the cash more amongst the midfielders so I think you can really get um, I'd rather at the moment might change I'd rather have Fernandez, Saka uh, and some more mid-price midfielders than just have Salah and be limited to maybe choosing one of them um, yeah. but I think like you said up until last year I'd have been exactly the same Salah was a must. He couldn't, I couldn't go without Sally in my side without feeling like watching games from behind the sofa. But I think Haaland's changed that slightly now because a lot of weeks you're not captain in Sally anymore. Whereas he was always yeah. the go to captain. He's the one that he's one that is coming to an age now where he's going to be, you'd expect him to, his numbers to start dropping maybe. Um, but yeah, obviously he's an elite player. If you can, you could get burned by him by any, at any point and, um, I, I keep changing my mind, but at the moment I'm on. I'm in the no seller camp. So, right, and with Edison, you'd like you said we can. You're much more aware of the late goal City concede when you've got him in your side. I'm, I'm, I'm sick of him. I'm not going near him this year. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Really good. Um, so, just a couple of teams that have got um, new managers. So, we've got who underperformed last season. So, we've got um, Spurs taken over by Ange Postacoglu. Obviously, we don't know um, what's going to happen with Harry Kane either, but he plays in a very, very nice style, done a really good job at Celtic. I know it's probably under scrutiny whether that's the most difficult job in the world, but he should bring a freshness to Spurs 
Um, but uh, a lot a lot of high profile managers have been there and failed. Do you think it'll be any different this time? And are you considering anyone from Spurs um in your game week one team? Um the answer at the minute is no, I'm not considering any any Spurs players. The only possible one is is even Perisic, who I have had in a couple of drafts that I've been sort of tinkering with. I think he's good value at five million. He's a, he's a good defender. He sometimes um, moves into midfield and he, he, he gets a lot of assists and he takes set pieces. So he's somebody who, who you could have in. I think it's difficult with new managers and, and, and FBL because there is an element of selection is, is, is so up in the air and you, you're never quite sure who they're going to play, who they're going to start. Um, and so I haven't, for, for that reason, because because they've got a new manager and because the Kane situation is at this stage up in the air, I've, I've sort of stayed away from, from, from those players. But I do think Perisic is, is decent value at, at five million. Yeah. What about yourself? Have you got anyone in uh, your list? I don't think I'll be going um, no. to Spurs. Uh, at the start, but I think they've got players with potential, even if Kane leaves, and maybe even more so if Kane leaves. Richarlison last year was awful, but in previous seasons, he's put some decent numbers together and got into double figures yes. for goals. He should be he's playing with better players than he ever was at Everton. If it comes right for him, I think seven million midfielder could be a really good, really good price. Um, Madison, obviously, really direct set pieces you expect him to take. Um, and then even and young young Ming Sun um, dropped three million this year, just coming at nine million again. Had a really poor season, but that could end up being a bargain price as well. So I think it's a wait and see for me. But there's, there could be some options there. The other one for me is Chelsea, yeah, um, with probably a more established Premier League manager coming in, uh, Pochettino. Are you backing him to turn it round? Does he bring a lot of the Chelsea players back into consideration for you? I, I think Chelsea have got a lot of top, top players. And if you actually looked at their squad last season, man for man, I think they were right up there. They, they, they had some unbelievable players. And for one reason or another, it just didn't, it, it just didn't click. And, Having an established Premier League manager, I think, will help. He knows the league very, very well. He's performed well in the league, and I guess a lot of these things is just how are they gonna, how are the players gonna react to him as as, as a manager? Um, so I think that again is a is a really, really interesting one, and you could end up maybe not at the start of the season, but as, after two or th- after two or three weeks getting some really, really good value players in there. Like Reese James, 5.5 5. 5 million. I mean, he has the potential to be probably one of the highest scoring defenders in the in the in, in the game. I think that's I know it's expensive for a defender, but it's it, it's not bad. Um it, it, even a Bobby Yang, I mean I, I don't know you know if, if he plays if, if Pochettino like likes him and, and picks him. He he's a he's a number nine who's capable of scoring against some of the weaker sides, you, you know, hat-tricks, braces all, all over the shop. So it'll be interesting to see who he picks. And I think, again, you need to look at the look at the starting 11 for the first couple of weeks and then maybe make a decision after that period when you know who's who's going to be going to be playing. Yeah, I'd forgotten about Bamiang even there, to be honest. And they brought in a couple of, a couple of strikers as well. Uh, Nicholas Jackson from Villarreal and, uh, and Kung Ku from... Uh, yeah, Leipzig. Um, all all reasonably priced. I think seven seven and a half million for those two. So again, both like they should be good additions to the Premier League. But um, yeah, and one other consideration is Chelsea's fixtures turn really nice from game week three. So it gives you a couple of weeks to have a look at them, assess who is going to be um, the good picks, and uh, and go from there. Uh, any of the other new players? Um, Mentioned a few there. Any of the new players taking your fancy? Uh, and Kunku Jackson, there's uh, Jobber's Live from Liverpool, Mason Mount moving to United. Yeah, I, I think Mount's an interesting one at United. I mean, he, he 
again, what went on at Chelsea last last season, it was it was really really difficult for him. Um, I think if he plays for Man United, he he could be. I know he's not he's not a massively attacking player, but I, I think he could be he could be a good one. I think he's he's reasonable value as well. I think he's um, he's coming in at a decent decent price. I think one one a couple of the the, the Arsenal ones to, to 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 look out Diego Diego Jota he's not a, a new player but he's somebody who's coming back from a long term injury at the end of last season and he's coming in at eight million I think that is I think that is good good value for him I think he could he could do well and one to throw out there again he's not not a new not a completely new player. But he is somebody who took a lot of stick last season. But when he played, I think he looked like returning a lot. And that was Anthony at Man United coming in at seven million. Um, he, he's not a popular player. People get frustrated with his antics on the pitch. And I don't think he's going to get a particularly good reception when he comes to Turf Moor. Um, but, but, but I do think that he might... He he might come good for for Man United, and he certainly wants to to watch um, after a couple of weeks. Yeah, really good shouts. Um, you've already mentioned a couple of players that have changed position. Um, just got the full list here. Uh, you mentioned Jota on there. I've already mentioned Richarlison. Is there anyone on there that comes into your thinking because of the because of the positional change or? Oh, you've you've mentioned Mbumo as well, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure so in in Bumo, I've, I've looked at. I think um, and see. So the, the the Brighton the Brighton um, player who got that that won the goal at the um, back end of last season. Um, he is somebody who is again someone someone to watch. They've got they've got good fixtures, and that price seems 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 pretty good. Um, <sighs> And like I say, look, that those ones that I've mentioned already, Jota and Wemo, I think uh, I think are the two standouts for me in in, in, in that list. Um, I think I possibly looking at that would possibly avoid Gakpo. I don't, I don't like to um, give people avoid <laughs> too much advice on who not to pick because you can end up looking looking a bit silly. But I think that is um, that is an interesting one, and, and whether he'll play as much next season with the with the fitness of. Liverpool, Liverpool squad sort of improving. I don't know what. What do you think about about him? Yeah, it, it, I don't. When I watch him, it doesn't really excite me that much. He, he, he's he's clearly a decent player, but when you've got the likes of Salah, Jota, and even Nunes, who I, th- I thought that's who you were describing when you said about um, every time you watched him that you thought he was going to return, yeah. but then somehow he didn't. Um, yeah, we'll talk about Anthony then, but um, I think there's just a lot more exciting picks in um, in yeah. the attack around that price and in other other teams' attacks. So, yeah, completely agree with you there. Just looking at that list, actually, um, Whistler from uh, he's the Brentford guy, isn't he? The guy yeah. who uh, I mean, he, he might um, he might play at centre forward for Brentford all all next next season with with Tony's absence. So that could be an interesting one. I know he's gone from a midfielder to, to a forward, but six million. Um, they they play good att- attacking football. He might get a lot of lot of chances in, in in that side. So that could be an interesting one to to keep an eye to keep an eye out for. That's not bad value for for him, particularly with Tony's absence. Yeah, there's there seems to be limited options in um, for forwards now. Yeah, uh, everyone's crammed into midfield. I think that's probably part of the formation changes in uh, in yeah. football in general. Um, but yeah, agree with you there. Um, right, time to run us quickly through your draft. We've already mentioned quite a few of the names, but uh, the standout for me there is uh, our own Anas running down the centre of midfield in your team there. <laughs> nice holding, holding midfield role for <laughs> Anas Sorori. Yeah. Allowing Saka and Embuemo to to to, uh, to to go into the into the attacking third, um, yeah. So yeah, we've mentioned quite quite a lot of them. I, I think the first thing to say is Man City. They've got good fixtures. They're the best side in the league. You, you really you, you want to be trying to trying to have the maximum of three players in, in, in that squad that, that that you can. And and so I've gone Haaland, I've gone Edison for the reasons that that, that we've talked about. Um, and the other one I've gone for at this stage, 
could easily change is, is, is Johnny Stones. Partly because, like, a bit like Alexander Arnold, he he's moving forward in, into midfield a little bit more. Um, and I thought he had such a good end to last season, like in the Champions League final, he was he was he was magnificent. I, I, I think he might be one of those players that plays you know, over 30 games for, for Man City next season. So that's that's sort of why I've, why I've picked him. And I think he's, he's, he's dangerous um, from an attacking attacking sense. Stupinian from, from Brighton, we've talked about. Salah, we've talked about. Wemo, we've talked about. Um, Matoma, you obviously, he's not going to be in your side. I know that much, but for sure. I'm just hoping... Uh, after week one, I'm messaging you saying, how do you feel about uh, Matoma's brace against yeah. Luton at home in the first fixture? Um, so we've talked about him. Ferguson, again, like like you mentioned a minute ago, sort of forwards. There aren't that many forwards that, that take your eye, really. Um, and, and, I, and I guess I've just probably picked him for, for, for the fixtures. Um, and I thought he had a good end to, to last season. I thought he... If I were him, I'd be wanting a starting place at the start of the start of next season. The then new manager seemed to seem to like him. Um, Forster, the, the Spurs, the, the Spurs subkeeper. That that's that's somebody. I mean, whether he'll play in, in for, for Tottenham, I don't know what you think about that. Whether whether he will or not, um, it's an interesting one. Um, that that again might might change. Bell, we've talked about Surridge at Forest. Um, he didn't play much last season, but he's he's cheap, um, and so he, he's somebody who, um, again, he, he, sometimes with with sub forwards, you, you you are just picking the cheapest you can find. It's it's not not so much how 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 good they are. It's just you, you're looking for a budget enabler. But I don't think he will 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 play that much. But he's you know he might get the odd call if, if Forrester playing at playing at home. Um, Saka we've talked about and then on to the two Burnley ones um, Bayer who again we've, we've, we've mentioned and finally Anastarori um, I think at 5 million he represents good value and I hope that in three or four weeks time all the FPL uh, managers out there are saying who's this Sorori kid at Burnley he's got two goals two assists in his first three games um, and his value shooting up um, to five point two, five point three million. So maybe it's a bit of a uh, of a hopeful pick, but I do think at five million, given his um, attacking returns last season, that 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 re- might represent some 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 good value in there. So um, to keep all all the Burnley fans happy, I've I've picked him at the minute, but subject to change. But hopefully, he'll get some get some uh, get some uh, time in in my side, uh, like Maxwell Corday did a couple of years ago. I think. Um, so, so yeah, yeah. Um, I think the the, the heart overhead decisions is probably the only yeah. the negative side of Burnley being in back in FPL. Um, but no, yeah, it's, that's the thing with our with our attacking players, um, Zaruri Benson, and then if we get someone to replace Teller and and maybe a new striker, they're going to be they're going to be dangerous. Um, and and last season. When we had a, a player on form, he seemed to score in flurries, which is always really good for for FPL. Uh, it, it were obvious who the right pick was at the right time. So yeah, I re- I like that pick. I'm not brave enough to make it myself, but um, but yeah, good uh, good on you. So my drafts just got the um the one Burnley player in um third sub. So I'll just say what I liked about your draft there as well is you had Bayer and Bell as your first two subs. So if you've got the City players in there and a subject to Pep Roulette, you know, at least you've got players who are going to be starting um, and hopefully one of them's got a reasonable fixture to come in if for whatever reason Stones gets rotated. But um, yeah, I really yeah. like that draft. And after uh, I've beat beat the drum about um, how good midfielders are and how there are little striking options, as you can see, I've gone 3-4-3 three, three, um, at the moment with my formation. A um, few players we've talked about. I think we haven't mentioned goalkeepers too much, but Pickford, four and a half million. Um, you mentioned Everton. have got a good run of fixtures at the start of the season. Hopefully, Dyche will help them keep it tight until they visit the turf in December, that is. Um, Zinchenko can easily be Gabriel. Uh, I think there's not much between, between those guys. 
Trent and Estupinum you've already talked about. I have gone for Foden because I think if you can if you can pick the right City midfielder, then um then you could you could end up winning big style. I had him for his hat trick against United at home last year and it made a big difference for me. But I think again, assess preseason, see how they do in the chari- charity shield, um, and pick one of them. Obviously, Bernardo Silva looks like he might be on his way out. So that's a bit less competition for Ford. And Myers has been linked with Saudi Arabia. So who knows? Yeah, Fernandez, Bowen, and Saka, I think, are pretty locked in my side. And then up front, uh, Calvert Lewin and Harlan, we've already covered. Jesus, I'm, I'm a sucker for Gabriel's Jesus, and he does not convert his chances. Uh, but I really like him as a player. And if Arsenal have a good run, and like you were saying before, I've tripled up on Arsenal um, uh, and only doubled up on City. But I think they're the two teams that the, they were the best two teams in the league last year. And that's um, that's where I'm starting. Um yeah, Ariola on my bench, the other keeper. Uh, but yeah, I think there's there's plenty of tinkering to be done. I'm sure you'll um I'm sure you'll agree, but um yeah. Hopefully we we'll both get off. No, I like that. I like the look yeah. of that. I like the look of that, that draft. I think that shows the advantage of not having not not picking Salah. You know, you, you have got free free up a bit more cash to um you know spread your spread your assets if you if, if you like. Um well, then- so yeah, no that that looks good. It's all yeah. good in game week one, but uh, it scares me a bit. Salah at home to Bournemouth in game week two, and Haaland's away at Newcastle, yeah. and there's uh, there's going to be a, yeah a few dilemmas there. But that's that's I'm not worrying about that right now. But we'll, uh, we'll no see. no a few weeks a few weeks to, to 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 get over first. Plus plus Burn the worries of Burnley, which we didn't have last, yeah, exactly. last season. So we'll just have a have a chat about Burnley. What um what do you make of the the summer business so far? Obviously, it's still early days. Um, there were shouts of the the board would try and get business done quite early. That's probably not, well, it's not been the case so far, especially in attacking uh, the attacking side of the pitch. Um, what do you, yeah, what do you make of the signing so far? Yeah, um, I think it's an interesting one because we're actually weaker as a squad now than we were last season. Because we've lost Teller, Maxson, and Harwood Bellis, and we haven't as yet replaced them. All right, we've got um, Daro Shane from, from from West Brom, who's a good, young, promising defender in that mould. Um, and we're looking to sign Kulibali, I think, who's another another, another, another defender who who will will strengthen. Um, but we as yet we haven't we haven't replaced them, so it doesn't worry me at this stage because. Whenever I hear Vincent Company speak, he always fills me like Dyche did. To be fair, with, with with great confidence, and I trust him to to get in who he who he wants and to to get the right assets in. And we've still got a few weeks before the start of the season, so um, so yeah. But if you're talking about how the squad looks now, if we started this the, the Premier League season with the squad that we currently have, I would be a little little concerned. But I'm sure that won't be won't, won't be the case. Um, the other situation that is, I think, an interesting one, um, and it's interesting um, for, for a number of reasons, is, is the goalkeeper situation. I actually thought Murich was one of our best players last season. And whenever Peacock Farrell played instead of Murich, we were nowhere near as good as an attacking force. And I think that he actually deserves a chance to play in the Premier League. It, with the style that we've got, maybe, maybe that's sentimental, um, and maybe you need to be a bit more brutal than that and try and, you know, James Trafford. I mean, he, he by the sounds of things, he's a he's a top quality keeper. But I, I'd be annoyed if I was Murich and new new keep, keeper come, came in and took my took my number one spot. I thought he was absolutely outstanding for us last season. So that to me is is a slightly strange one. Um, but again, I guess you've got to got to trust what what company decides because he's he's done so well so far. Yeah, I think that it, it does seem harsh. You don't know what goes on behind the scenes. Um no. and, and the ruthless streak has got company to where he is today. Yeah. So I think you've I think you bang on. You've got to trust his decision making based on what we've seen so far. But yeah, I completely agree with you. There weren't I don't think there were any other position on the pitch where we had injuries and someone came in and they didn't just slot straight into the 
the mould of the previous player and do yeah. the job just as well. Whereas, like you said, it would really tell him when um, when Muric wasn't there. So yeah, I'm I'm right there with you on uh, on that one. Is there is there any other players um, that have been linked that you'd um, like to sign more than more than any any of the other ones or? Um, I think Koulibaly will be a good one. I've, I've read quite a lot on on him. I think he he sounds like a a really good player. I hope, I hope we get him over the line. Um, whether we'll whether we'll go in for for, for Teller again, I, I, it doesn't look like we're going to be going to be doing that, does it? I mean, they put a, a pretty hefty price tag on him, so I'm, I'm not sure. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll go for him. Um, th- there's been talk today in the on on social media that Wakehorst has said that he is ready for ready for the Premier League and wants to wants to play at Burnley. And you know, it's it's again how company deals with 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 that situation. I mean, there's history with him and some of the other players. I know him and Connor Roberts. Um, exchanged a few words on inter- on international duty, and, and uh, he's obviously not a popular figure amongst the uh, amongst some of the squad members. But uh, you know, he's, he's actually, I think, a decent a decent footballer, and you know, maybe maybe he'll be given a, a chance. You know, who who knows? But um, that's some, something to to look out for, and he he would be like a a, a new a new signing if he did if he did play. Um, I don't know what what about you? Who, who do you who do you fancy off the of the transfer list, um, I think um, I really like you said the three loan players were were massive for us last year. Big fans of them all. Uh, we're not going to get Howard Bellis now. We've got plenty no. of centre half. Um, so Matson and Teller, uh, they were a year ago. If you'd have told me we were getting them, I wouldn't have really batted an eye. I wouldn't have known much about either of them in terms of actually being decent finished article footballers, but. Um. Yeah, they'd they'd fit strip well. Yeah, we saw we saw how influential they were on the team last year, and if we could somehow get both of them over the line, then fantastic. But like you said, it's looking more and more unlikely. There's not much noise there, and a lot of like I said, a lot of money being being banded about over over both of the heads. Um. So we definitely do need a left back. Um. He played such yeah. an influential role in how, how we went forward, unless. All these centre half signings and and signings will mean that we're we're looking to change formation. Who knows? But um, go back to the point that trust company with um, whatever yeah. he decides to do. Um, I think until um, yeah, and until the, the season kicks off, I won't. It'll be it'll be an unknown, won't it? But you look at the teams in there now. We've already finished above Sheffield United and Luton last year. Um, the three promoted sides managed to stay up the year before, which makes it look more competitive down the bottom end. So who knows how we'll get on, but it's really exciting. I can't wait to to see us back up there playing a very different brand of football than, than we'll have done before. Um, yeah, if you... Yeah, uh, if yeah you... I, I, I agree with that. I'm really looking forward to um to the to, to next season, like you say, playing a completely different brand of football to what we have played in the in the Premier League previously. Um and I think it'd be really, really interesting to see how we get on. And uh, you know, I, I don't think I don't think company has the mentality of I just want to stay up. I just want to finish 17th and that's going to be a great season. Um I think he will want not necessarily more than that, but I think he'll be ambitious, and I think he'll want to take us forward as far as he as, as far as he can. And I think that that is exciting for for, for fans. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, it was back on that turf. Um, yeah, exactly. I think uh, we'll uh, we'll wrap it up there. Um, thanks, thanks again for uh, for coming on, Luke. I look forward to. Locking horns with you again, hopefully at the top end of the no never no never league like we have been in the last uh, last couple of years. Uh, yeah, look forward to it. If uh, if there are any um, any new uh, entrants looking to get involved, uh, we'll tweet all the details after this. Um, if you've already been in it, you should you should auto rejoin. But um, yeah, we'll put all the details out there. The league code is CB two W U M. But yeah, there's there's an easy auto link um that will attach to all our socials. Um 
we have two qualifiers for the Podcasters League uh, from last year um, as part of their prize. So Erse or Eric Sekic um, gets the league qualification uh, and James Sherborne won the cup with a few epic battles. Um, so yeah, you'll uh, if you can get in touch, we'll send you a separate code for the uh, for the Podcasters League and you can uh, get involved with all the people that you're listening to week in, week out. Uh, all I have to say is, uh, yeah, thanks again, Luke, and roll on the season. The thanks, top. Adam. All, all the best up the Clarets. The Known and Ever podcast is brought to you in association with the Talk Sport Fan Network. Natalie Bromley is the host and editor, and the show is produced by Matt Moss. Our resident statistician is Dave Roberts, and our FPL expert is Adam Dennett. The analysis show team is collectively Tom Whitaker, Richard Steele, George Poole, Charlotte Rigby, Adam Dennett and Robbie Kopak. Our music is provided by George Gaskill and our newsletter team is headed up by Jamie Smith. If you don't already, you can subscribe to our newsletter by visiting nonadnever.substack.com. Our thanks as ever go to our partners TalkSport. We are as ever proud to be part of the TalkSport fan network.